Now to understand this, let's imagine that these are my x, y and z coordinates. So let that be my x coordinate, this one be my y and this one be my z. Now you know that I can refer to any point in space using these three coordinates, using my box approach, right? So let's say I refer to a point on this plane itself, x, y, let it be 2, 3. So if I know the point 2, 3, I know I have to walk two steps in the direction of the positive x-axis and then three more in the direction of my y and I'll reach my point. Now I want to represent the same thing using the language of vectors. Why? Because I'm talking about vectors, I want to be able to talk about everything, including components, in the language of vectors. Now how do I do that? If I imagine this to be a unit vector, a vector with magnitude 1 and pointing in the direction it looks like it's pointing, then it can point in infinitely many directions, right? But what if I make it point in a very special direction, the direction of my positive x-axis? So now, the tip of that is exactly at 1, 0. So if I want to refer to 1, 0, I can refer to it as 1 into my vector, unit vector along x direction. I want to give it a name, so I'll call it x cap, just to say it's the unit vector pointing in the direction of x itself. Now, if I want to refer to 2, 0, what do I do? I can lengthen this vector, make it double its length. And how do I do that? By multiplying it with a scalar, right? So 2 times x cap will give me the point 2, 0. So if I want to refer to 2, 0, I can either say 2, 0 or say 2 times x cap. Now it must become easy to imagine what I must do for 2, 3, right? I have a vector that's pointing along my x direction, unit vector. So I want one more that's pointing along my y direction. So if I take one more and say that this one points along my y direction and as you will probably guess I'll call it my y cap, then the point 2, 3 can be referred to as 2 times x cap plus 3 times y cap. Where that plus is, the vector plus, right? Because I'm going to use my triangle law. 2 times my x cap plus 3 times my y cap, which using triangle law will add up to my vector that points to the point 2, 3. Now, it will become easy to imagine this in 3D as well because all I need now is to refer to any point. These two will not refer to any point on this plane. That's all I need. But if I want to refer to points in space as well, along with these two, I'm going to add one more which is going to point to my z-axis. I'm going to call it z-cap. Now, these three unit vectors together can refer to any point in space, thereby making it so that we can use the language of components within vectors. How is that? So whatever I told before, right, a point x, y, z now becomes x times x cap plus y times y cap plus z times z cap. Now, what I called x cap, y cap, and z cap, I can also call i cap along the x-axis, j cap along the y-axis, and k cap along the z-axis. It's just another name to refer to the same unit vectors. But why do we do this? I don't know. Okay, you might as well use X cap, Y cap, and Z cap. They do the job really well. But many, many books choose to use I cap, J cap, and K cap. It's just another way of saying the same thing. So now, using this language, if a point had been X comma Y comma Z, now it will be referred to as X times I cap plus Y times J cap plus Z times K cap. 